Sure, ketogenic diets can help you lose weight, but you're just gonna end up being a skinny corpse. Have you heard that statement before? I sure have. I've heard it from clinicians and doctors, well-meaning doctors, who just think there's nothing healthy about a keto diet, that you can lose weight, but it absolutely is going to increase your cardiovascular risk, lead to an early death, so what's the point of being skinny and dead? That's the way it goes, right? But is this true? Turns out it's not true. I wanna get into some of the data that makes some people think that's the case, but talk about why the data doesn't support it and talk about two specific examples that show exactly the opposite, that show you can reduce your cardiovascular risk with a low carb or keto diet. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com. And this is a crucial, crucial topic because look, the evidence is pretty clear that low carb and keto diets can help people lose weight, help with multiple medical conditions, including whether it's mental health or clearly type two diabetes, metabolic dysfunction can help people feel better. But, but the question is what happens to your cardiovascular risk? And mainstream medicine is very clear. Any low carb, higher fat diet is associated with increased risk of cardiovascular disease and early death and therefore should not be prescribed widely. And I strongly disagree with that. And I think the literature supports disagreement and we need to start seeing things in a different view. So why do people think this way? Why do doctors think this way? The main problem is a number of the studies, nutrition, epidemiology studies, observational studies, which are very poor and low um, quality studies to begin with, but when they start by defining low carb diets as less than 40% of calories, right away, you're not comparing apples to apples, pardon the pun, right away, you're comparing basically a mixed high carb, high fat diet because 40% of your calories from carbs, if you're eating 2000 calories per day, is, is about 200 grams of carbohydrates. Now that is, that's as many grams of carbs that a true low carb eater eats maybe in a week, let alone a day, but that's what's allowed under those definitions. So it just doesn't fit, but yet the headlines frequently don't reflect that. They'll say low carb diets associated with increased risk of death, but the headlines don't say 40% of the calories from carbs was defined as low carb. Now, the other line of evidence that they use is looking at distributions of the highest carb eaters versus the lowest carb eaters, the highest fat eaters versus the lowest fat eaters, again, in nutrition epidemiology studies. And they frequently do find the highest fat, lowest carb eaters have the, the worst health and the highest risk of cardiovascular disease. But again, none of those are following a whole foods, low carb or keto diet. It's this mix of of sugar and ultra processed foods, standard American diet, versions of the standard American diet that have so much healthy user bias. So if that's the line of evidence that you're using to support your theory, gosh, that's pretty thin. That's skating on thin ice, so to speak, because that's such weak evidence that you can just easily poke holes in um, and doesn't really stand up to scrutiny. So the question is though, is there other evidence to suggest that low carb or keto diets are not harmful for your cardiovascular disease risk? And the answer there is absolutely. So now the caveat being these aren't outcome studies. They don't show clear reduction in heart attacks or living longer. Instead, they use surrogate outcomes, you know, cardiovascular risk markers, blood sugar, um, LDL, HDL, triglycerides, and a calculated risk score. So the American College of Cardiology and other groups have a calculated risk score where you plug in different uh, variables, you know, your age, your gender, your, your race, and your blood pressure, and your LDL, and your total cholesterol, and it comes up with a cardiovascular risk score. So using that as a surrogate, there are a couple studies that show low carbon keto diets actually decrease your cardiovascular risk. The first one was part of the Verda Health trial, the one year results that was published in cardiovascular diabetology in 2018. And the short answer, what they found is that LDL, LDL cholesterol went up by 10%, but overall calculated cardiovascular risk went down by 12%. Now, how can that be? Well, ApoB, which is actually a better measure than LDL for cardiovascular risk, didn't change. And blood sugar got better, triglycerides got better, HDL got better, VLDL went down, small dense LDL cholesterol went down. So there's so many other improvements um, and improved cardiovascular risk, decreased blood pressure. It showed that the calculated risk went down after one year on a ketogenic diet. So that's pretty impressive. Now you could say, okay, but that's you know a big company with lots of resources. How can we scale that? Well, 
More recently, Dr. Tro Kalajian in his practice, a one doctor medical practice basically, published something similar. Now on a much smaller scale, there were nine patients and they were enrolled in a six month program that used a low carb ketogenic diet and sort of a uh, a telemedicine and app-based care model from a single doctor practice. And in the six months, these patients lost 38 pounds or 17 kilos. They improved their A1C, their fasting glucose, their HOMA IR, their triglycerides, their C-reactive protein, their blood pressure, All of these things improved and their calculated cardiovascular risk score decreased from a 9.2 to a 5.1. So an absolute decrease of four percentage points of their cardiovascular risk and a relative risk reduction of 44%. Now, just to put those into perspective, the guidelines say that if you're above a 7.5% 10-year risk, that you should strongly consider statins. And if you're below 7.5, that there's less of a push to consider statins. So this is interesting that what in, based on this six months, they took them out of that statin range, so to speak. Um, you know, if you're following traditional guideline-based therapy, looking at everybody as basically the same and fitting the same guidelines, which is its own topic. But the other thing is he did that, or his practice did that while reducing medications and saving an estimated $45,000 um, over the, the course of the trial. Um, So those are two examples of how a low carb keto diet doesn't not only increase your cardiovascular risk, but can actually decrease your calculated cardiovascular risk. So the question I started with, will low carb keto diet turn you into a skinny corpse? The evidence just isn't there to support it. It's a, I guess it's a, you know, cute catchphrase that people can use, but it's poor quality evidence to suggest that that's even a case. It doesn't apply to true low carbon keto diets. And we have evidence to the contrary that using surrogate outcomes, not hard clinical outcomes, but using surrogate outcomes, you can actually decrease your calculated cardiovascular risk. So I hope this helps put things into a different perspective. And look, if you have a doctor who thinks you're going to kill yourself by, uh, by following a low carb or keto diet, please share this. Maybe this will help um, doctors, clinicians, dietitians see things from a different perspective and evaluate things a li- maybe a little bit more accurately in terms of how it applies to you as an individual. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. We'll see you here next time on Diet Doctor News on YouTube.